People don't trust the mainstream media. Journalists want to regain that trust, but their solution is to throw out objectivity. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Americans' trust in the media is at an all-time low. It's lower than an earthworm cheating on his girlfriend with her sister. That's low. Poll after poll paints a negative picture of trust in the media. And journalists have been hit particularly hard. According to the Pew Research Center, a majority of Americans have not too much confidence or no confidence at all in journalists. There's good reason for that, but we'll get into that later. For now, let's just say that journalists are none too pleased with their bad reputation, and they want to do something about it. Now, one option would be to report on this and just lie about the numbers, but that probably wouldn't help their problem. Another option would be to commit to more objectivity in their reporting. And when I say objectivity, I mean presenting facts without sprinkling in personal bias, beliefs, feelings, or prejudice. For example, saying the sky is blue, as opposed to saying the sky is blue and it'd be even bluer if it weren't for those blasted Republicans. Given that not all issues are clear cut, they could also commit to showing different perspectives. You would think that would be a good goal, but you'd be wrong. Journalists have decided on a different strategy to win back public trust, throwing objectivity out the window. Journalists say true journalism can't be objective. In fact, it shouldn't be, because it's a misleading and dangerous illusion. Yeah, how dare you say something as misleading and dangerous as the sky is blue? What's next? Two plus two equals four? This isn't some fringe idea. Journalists from a variety of prominent news outlets and universities are promoting this. After interviewing over 75 news leaders, journalists, and other media practitioners, Former executive editor for The Washington Post, Leonard Downey Jr., and former CBS News president, Andrew Hayward, released a report showing that lots of journalists want to move beyond objectivity. People like Julia Wallace, a Cronkite School professor and former editor of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, who says objectivity was wrong, a failed concept. And Emilio Garcia Ruiz, editor-in-chief of the San Francisco Chronicle, who says objectivity has got to go. I thought their entire job was being objective. This is like finding out that Colonel Sanders doesn't believe in frying chicken. So why do they believe objectivity was wrong? Going by the pattern I've seen developing, I'd guess the answer has something to do with racism or sexism. That couldn't possibly be the case. Could it? Well, it turns out it could. Many, like former Associated Press executive editor Kathleen Carroll, and co-founder of the 19th, Emily Ramshaw, say objectivity is a standard set by rich, white, heterosexual men who have the power to dictate what gets coverage and how. This mirrors Pulitzer Prize winner Wesley Lowery's comments back in 2020 when he said, the views and inclinations of whiteness are accepted as the objective neutral. Racism and sexism, of course. The culprit behind everything. Stub your toe, white supremacy strikes again. You can tell because even the bandage is white. As you can guess, a lot of this is coming from a left-leaning framework, which isn't surprising since a majority of journalists lean left politically. So, what's the alternative to objectivity? According to journalists, truth. And what is truth? It's how a given journalist sees reality as long as it's not restricted by the ideas of a rich, white, heterosexual man. Vague, I know. Journalists argue that sharing opposing sides of an issue gives too much space for lies on news platforms and detracts from plainly stating truth and facts. So rather than give space for perspectives they see as dangerous, journalists would prefer just sharing their own views of what's correct. And anyone who disagrees, well, they just can't handle the truth. That's why many complain that objectivity prevents truly accurate reporting informed by their own backgrounds, experiences, and points of view. When you view objectivity as just a powerful white man's ideas of truth, 
then it sort of makes sense that you would want to replace it with your own. In theory, this allows for more viewpoints to be heard. In practice, though, this leaves no room for perspectives journalists disagree with. These opinions from a majority of the journalistic community have convinced the authors of the report that truth-seeking news media must move beyond objectivity. In fact, the pursuit of truth without objectivity was made into the number one goal in the report's trustworthy news playbook. Ironically, a playbook written by two white men. But with objectivity being thrown out, can we really be sure they're white? Or men? Or that it's actually just two of them? I don't know what the truth says about that. And given journalists' track record, it's probably not a good idea to leave it to them to dictate truth. I'll explain why after the break. Welcome back. Journalists want to produce trustworthy news without objectivity which many say is based on white men's preferences. It's a zero-sum equation, with many presuming that seeking objectivity gets in the way of speaking truth, especially being objective for both sides. I suppose it shouldn't be shocking that people who blame white supremacy for everything see this as a black and white issue. But how do journalists determine what truth is? For many journalists, speaking truth involves allowing their identities and experiences to inform their reporting, so that they aren't just presenting the opinions of powerful white men. I didn't realize you needed to factor in the color of your skin to report on the color of the sky. This also means not having to present certain perspectives that they see as dangerous, such as disagreements on climate change. If you think all this sounds like activism, you're right. It is. Objectively. And many journalists embrace it such as the creator of the 1619 Project, Nicole Hannah-Jones. Journalism is not stenography. We don't simply say, Donald Trump said this, uh, Nancy Pelosi said this. Mm -hmm. That should not be our role. Our role should actually be at getting at the truth uh, and providing context and analysis so people understand what this means. I believe all journalism is activism. We should not pretend that we have no feelings. We should not pretend that we don't have thoughts on the things that we cover because we do. This type of thinking is especially common among those who want to promote social justice. But it opens up a whole can of worms. Lo, cheating with her sister worms. Partially this is because journalists, like Hannah Jones, include their thoughts and feelings while making it sound like they are presenting undisputed facts. They are taking it upon themselves to determine for other people what's truth and how to frame things. Meanwhile, any presentation of a perspective they don't agree with is dismissed as both sidism. To them, presenting the other side's arguments is equivalent to giving a platform for racists and war criminals. This is a huge problem. It does away with any nuance for complex topics. And it's a very slippery slope towards censorship in the name of combating disinformation. Also, hearing the other side is literally the best way to get to the truth. That's how the entire U.S. court system is supposed to work. Imagine if a judge said, you've been accused of eating puppies. Well, that's all I need to hear. I don't need both sidism in this courtroom. Guilty. But now, some journalists believe they can present facts accurately and fairly without objectivity, and the perspectives they don't like. But in practice, they have proven time and time again that they allow bias to compromise accuracy and fairness. Hannah Jones of the 1619 Project is one example. Much of its premises about African American slavery were criticized by historians as inaccurate. Yet Hannah Jones, to this day, keeps dismissing criticism as not legitimate. Although to be fair, I don't consider any criticism against me as legitimate either. You think my sense of humor is too dry? That's just white supremacy talking. And Hannah Jones isn't the only journalist peddling inaccurate information. Other notable examples of media bias include the media smearing the Hunter Biden laptop story as Russian disinformation, even though that turned out to be true. The media has also taken unverified sources at face value just because it fits their narratives. This came back to bite them when allegations of Trump-Russia collusion turned out to be unsubstantiated. And when the Russian bots' disinformation narrative turned out to be a scam. Ironic. 
They're so afraid of disinformation, they became the very thing they were afraid of. I could go on, but you get the idea. If you want to see more examples, I'll leave some links below. The point I'm getting at is that it's hard to trust journalists to present the truth accurately when they have a poor track record of doing so, especially when they dismiss things as disinformation that end up being true. Journalists are putting too much trust in themselves to know the truth perfectly, especially when objectivity is literally the metric for figuring out the truth. That's like saying, why use a scale to weigh something? when we could just use bananas. That'll give us just as accurate a picture. To make matters worse, there's a large disconnect between what journalists want and what audiences want. While a majority of U.S. journalists believe that not every side deserves equal coverage, the vast majority of U.S. adults do, leaving journalists thinking, really? You mean Americans don't want one-sided, 24-7 fear-baiting? No. It's the audiences that are out of touch. People don't want narratives shoved down their throats. For many Americans who don't share their views, journalists are acting like propagandists, not educators. So it's no wonder trust in journalists is declining. By putting more emphasis on self-identity and lived experiences in reporting, and less focus on nuance, journalists end up just catering to people who share the same ideas as them. And that's not going to help with pursuing objectivity or truth, not to mention confidence in journalists. So what do you think of objectivity in journalism? Leave your comments below. If you like this show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.